Hi, my name is David Berebee and I'm a member of the Board of Selectmen here in the town of Somerset. I'm also the chairman of the board, which I will get into a little bit later as far as what that means. In Somerset, we have three selectmen. I am the chairman of the board. We also have Stephen Monas, who is the chairman of the Board of Health. We also have Holly McNamara, who is the secretary and clerk. Hi everybody, my name is Holly McNamara. I am a newly elect elected selectman in the town of Somerset. Um, this past May was my election and my term is three years. Um, I am on the board with David Barabee, who you've heard from, who is our chair. Um, just a little bit of background on me. Um, I graduated from Somerset High School, now Somerset Berkeley Regional High School in 1995. Um, I went away for, for school. I studied engineering, um, which you would think, how does an engineer become a politician? So I'm still actually an engineer, but um, just a little quick backstory. Um, Studied engineering my whole life, um, was away for about 14 years, coming back to visit pretty often, moved back about four years ago from now, and really felt that there was a lot of things in town, there were a lot of things in town that needed to be changed that, that I thought I could at least have an impact. Um, I really care about my hometown, it brought me up, it raised me, and it's a really unique place. I know some of you might not realize that now, but, but you will after you've been away from school here. Um, it's a really, really special place. Hello. My name is Gil Ponce and I'm a member of the Berkeley Board of Selectmen. I've been a member of the Board of Selectmen since 2015. I'm 21 years old. As you can tell, I'm relatively young as a selectman, so my history in politics is relatively short but expansive. I first got involved in town government back when I was about 19 years old. I served on the Zoning Board of Appeals as soon as I graduated from high school. After about a year on the zoning board, I decided to run for the Board of Selectmen and luckily won my seat. So I've been serving for about a year and nine months. When I was in high school or even middle school, um, I wasn't really involved. Uh, I think it, I have to put that possibly on my parents. Um, I wasn't, my parents were quiet people and they didn't really push me into getting out there and, and being more involved. Um, of course, still being helping out others, but I was never on the advisory committee or um, student council or anything like that. I didn't even perform, and it's funny because people know me as a DJ, as a performer, and I didn't even participate in the case rallies, which was kind of, people probably would say, wow, that's kind of strange knowing what I've done after high school. So, um, like I said, I was more reserved in high school, but, um, once I got out of high school and once I got into college and also helping out with uh, people with uh, physical disabilities and mental disabilities, which I have a brother, um, once again I reached out in that way and then I've helped out in town. I've performed many times in offering my DJ services to a lot of the local schools here in town um, for their family fun nights and what as, as a free service. So once again always giving back and then as I got older and my kids moved out, and I decided to get more involved with the town. I did the Spirit of Somerset, not being an elected official. I did that for two years um, as a co-chair. Uh, and then I decided after that that you know I wanted to get more involved with local government. I actually have been, for the past four years, and for three years before I ran for office, um, very involved in town. I chaired Raiders Remember, you might know about that. Um, right after I moved home, I got involved with that. Um, and I just had a genuine interest in the town and still do. I also have involvement in regional politics and statewide politics. I've worked for Governor Charlie Baker. I've worked for his Mass Victory team. I've worked for many state reps and state senate candidates. I've, I've made my way through it. I've worked for congressional candidates as well. In the town of Somerset, the Board of Selectmen is comprised of three members, each elected to serve a three-year term. They are the chief elected officials for the town and among their many duties, they approve warrants for town meeting, implement all votes adopted at town meeting, enforce town bylaws and policies, and appoint members to various committees and boards. Sounds like a lot. Um, as far as what we do is we are the 
basically the authority as to um, setting, like I said, the policies and the bylaws. Bylaws in town are laws that the town itself at town meeting vote upon. Some of them are having unregistered vehicles on your property is, is one of the bylaws that you cannot have that. There are also setbacks as to property, um, setbacks to where you can put a shed, where you can put your house. There are many, many bylaws that we have in this town. So we enforce the bylaws and we also make policies, policies in regarding um, how we are going to have some of our employees on their work schedule, when town hall is open, everything that um, has to be you know, decided upon a change or something that some, something needs to be done comes in front of the Board of Selectmen. The Selectmen role is actually a part-time position. So we have a town administrator that works for us, uh, Richard Brown, and he does an incredible job. His, part, his position is full-time. He is a hired position. Um, and so we delegate a lot of the work to him. Um, and so our positions, we don't get paid very much at all. Um, definitely nothing that we could live off of. Um, we do this purely because we care. Um, so it's almost like it's a volunteer job. I'd like to talk about the duties and responsibilities of being the chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Um, one of the duties is that you set the date and the time of the meetings and all of the agenda that you would have at the meeting. So that all is prompted by the chairman. Uh, also, the chairman of the board uh, basically controls the meeting. Um, makes, you know, they open the meeting, we adjourn the meeting, and um, basically controls the flow of the meeting, who is to speak, when they are speaking. Um, so it is the so-called upper hand of being on this board. Um, there is that responsibility, which I take seriously. Um, even though I'm very casual in my approach, I am very serious as far as the nature of the content. Since I've been in office, there are a couple of things that I've really learned, um, kind of big hurdles that um, I've learned are make, make things difficult. Um, it's really difficult to progress and to turn around a ship, a large ship that's been moving for 227 years. That's how old our town is. Um, the open meeting law, uh, we, we have three selectmen on our board. Um, we cannot collaborate behind closed doors. Um, I can't call the other selectmen and say, hey guys, I want to brainstorm about something. We can't deliberate. Um, we have to call every single meeting that we have, 48 hours notice, post it to the public, and open the meeting floor. And it's just extremely cumbersome. Um, imagine your class projects, if you have a class project with a group of, of friends, group of students, and you can't talk to each other. Um, every time you have to meet, you have to post a meeting for two days before to the public and then host a meeting, an official meeting. The Board of Selectmen also acts as the Board of Health in town and the licensing board. We're responsible for issuing such licenses as the alcoholic beverages, the class one, class two car, dealer, uh, car dealership licenses, common vicula, which is if you're opening a restaurant, automatic um, amusement licenses, uh, amongst others. My expansive history has to deal just as much with governmental as much as the political. So you're always going to get a balance with me. And in all reality, what I want to segue that into is talking about the difference between local, state, and federal elections. First off, I'm going to start off with what all three have in common. And we're not including the presidency in this round. We're going to leave that for a secondary. The presidency is on its own. But we're going to talk about everything from your dog catcher and your selectman all the way up to your United States Senator. These races are all done by popular vote. Whomever gets the highest vote total wins. Pure and simple. It's all about your ground game, how to get out to vote, and how a candidate actually performs on stage, how they interact with the crowd, how they deal with the debate. And then we're going to throw in the presidential right now. The presidential, what you do is you deal with the electoral college which it's essentially the first person to get to 270 electoral votes, depending on the states that you win, gets the presidency. As we've seen this last election, sometimes it doesn't work out where the popular vote getter doesn't get the electoral college. As we know, the person who won the popular vote, Secretary Clinton, was bested by Mr. Trump, 
in President-elect Trump, I should say, in the Electoral College, 306 to, I want to say it was like 214, 215, around there. So what happens is the Electoral College purpose is to equalize everybody, to make certain that California, Texas, Florida, and New York are not deciding the elections. Those four states, overall, if you look at the national popular vote, control one-third of the popular vote, there's a reason why you have the Electoral College involved. And I think it's very important that we keep it and respect it as well. You should always try to help out other people. Always try to give back um, because don't take for granted what you have right now. Um, you should always appreciate it and, like I said, Somebody's giving right now and, and, and offering this beautiful school um, to, this, to the students of you know, Somerset and Berkeley. So uh, you should, that should be an initial thing is always to, uh, to give back to your community. If you have an interest in inkling to get in politics but you can't vote, there are so many ways for you to get involved. You can normally, both parties, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party during midterm elections and presidential years, they'll normally have local offices set up where you can go down, make phone calls for candidates. You can go out and knock doors. You can hold signs. You can do, you can help them fundraise. You can do a lot for your local candidates. And I like to put it this way. I believe your local elections matter more honestly than your presidential election. A president will have an effect on your life, yes, but who's more likely to have a daily impact on your life? It's going to be the person, your tax assessors, who are setting your tax rate. It's going to be your board of selectmen that's pushing for a new bylaw or pushing for an override. These decisions at home are just as important, if not more so, than the broader national scale. I've learned a lot since May. Um, and I'm actually here to talk to you about marketing and introducing yourself to the community and um, how I reconnected with the community and how I campaigned to become the, the next selectman. Um, so, you know, that's a tough thing. How do you introduce yourself? There are 18,000 people here in town. Um, only about 13,000 are registered voters and about 4,000 of those vote, may probably less. Um, so. The number one key to that is communication. And I think communication applies to everything in life. It's the most paramount thing you could use, most paramount skill you could use in any career. Um, so I created a Facebook page. I created a website. Um, I have a Twitter account. And I think the, the most important thing that I did create was this flyer. And I'm going to hold it up here. Um, so it has a picture of me on the front. I got a little bit tired of seeing my face towards the end of the campaign, but you really need to put your face out there and so that people recognize you. And um, Some say in marketing, uh, a person needs to see something seven times before they remember it. So you really want to just keep kind of repeating yourself. Um, I put signs up, um, ask people to put signs in their yard. You probably saw the signs all over town. If you want to get involved, I truly suggest that you do. If you want a future in politics or you want a future in government, get involved young. Soak it all in. Be around people who have been in it for a long time. I, I can tell you, when I was appointed to the zoning board, somebody recognized me from town meeting. They've been on the zoning board, if I'm trying to remember right, for... They were on the zoning board for about 15 years before they passed away. God rest his soul. But... I can tell you, it gave me a large amount of wisdom going forward into what I wanted to do. The other thing is, um, that I think is really important, every, almost every politician, whether it's local or national, um, wants to go in um, and take a machete and just change everything um, with dis complete disregard to um, the history that's been built up behind them. And I've been in an entrepreneurial environment for a few years, um, and that's kind of how entrepreneurs think. They come in, they want to disrupt the place and change everything. You really can't do that, um, and I've learned that too. Things are the way they are for a reason. Um, you have to respect, for us, the 227 years before us, and really understand it before you can change it. So for the past six to eight months, I have been working really hard 
Um, and in my part time, you know, as I do my engineering job during the day and the select and stuff as it comes um, every day, um, to learn why things are the way they are um, and to understand everything before I can go in and really change things for the better. You don't jump right into running for elected office. Try to get appointed to something simple like your zoning board of appeals or your celebrations committee or the conservation commission. Try to get appointed to these smaller positions to see if you like the feeling of how government works and you can also figure out from that perspective what you want to change about it because you can be the change that you want to see.